Today I'm going to take you through an unconventional workflow which will feature some of our new release features for the 2014 release coming the first quarter of next year. I'll be using in the workflow our new LMKR volume attributes, which is a post-fact processing of seismic data that generates many proprietary outputs for use in other third-party applications or within SizeVision itself. I'm also going to be demonstrating some of the well planning solutions we have to replace the TrackFinder Express module and also show you some of the improved integration between our seismic interpretation and our geomodeling integration. Final steps will be to take questions and follow up with some website information. Our 2014 release builds upon our known strengths in geology, geophysics, petrophysics, GIS, and engineering. It is a lightweight to heavyweight application. As a matter of fact, I'm running on a, on a laptop today. And we have optimized key unconventional workflows with innovative content because most of the wells being drilled in North America are horizontal wells. We've expanded in the area of engineering and GNG workflow integration. Particularly for 2014, we have a new field planning module that allows you to plan multiple wells ahead of time on a pre-modeled surface, the target surface, and uh, keep the drillers uh, well occupied while you come up with the rest of the plays. This results in a tangible time and reduction cost at an unparalleled price point. 2014 also builds upon our leadership in geology, geophysics, new field planning, and a new visualization. In geology, we have multi-dimensional geological interpretation from well log analysis to cross-section analysis and 2 and 3D geomodel. In geophysics, we have integrated much more seamlessly the geological and geophysical interpretation to enhance your sophistication of your geomodel with integrated geophysical interpretation. Building on all this, we've added new field planning capabilities that will be demonstrated in a later webinar in this series of webinars. Within that whole discipline, we will also introduce a new visualization environment where you will be able to draw a 2D area probe, which then takes that area into a 3D view to allow you to view all of the objects within that map space. Our new LMKR volume attributes is an LMKR proprietary licensed product. It features both trace-based and frequency-based attributes, and it allows from pathogen spectral decomposition techniques for high resolution results and those spectral decomposition results can be used in the calculation of new volume attributes particularly in ESP and the simulus volumes that I will show you in the demonstration. The new LMKR volume attributes reads both SEGY for industry standard and geographics proprietary 3DX data sets. I will also introduce the new LMKR well planning tool this tool allows you to interactively design wells in a smart section, projected cross section, and will replace the current Track Planner Express utility. It is fully integrated within the database and saves the well plan to the database. Now on with the workflow. We'll first start out with the geological interpretation. We'll be looking at the Barnett Shale model in northern Texas. I will do a petrophysical evaluation to identify <clears throat> the sweet spot for the unconventional target, apply a mineral model to the cross-section, pick that target, and model that surface in 3D using our smart section frame builder geomodeling te technology. Then we'll shift over to geophysics in smart and size vision and view the Bakken there. We'll look at the Atoka surface. We'll model that with our new velocity modeling tools convert the Atoka surface to depth, then view the Simlitz time slice built in LMKR volume attributes, and view the curvature attributes built within size vision itself, and then take the depth converted Atoka surface into our geomodel to further refine that interpretation. From there we'll plan a new well along our new refined target surface, drill, correlate, and geosteer the new well, 
and then update the model so that the model will be ready for new field planning and well planning so it's the most up-to-date model possible. Onward with the demonstration. If you're looking first at Project Explorer, I want to draw your attention to this icon on the Discovery Toolbar. This is the Smart Section Geomodeling application. Smart Section Geomodeling is performed by our new frame builder, Topology Engine, that sits internal and integrated with Smart Section. When you launch Smart Section, you first see a map. We're currently looking at the Barnett surface being modeled on the fly with triangulation and minimum curvature smoothing. I've got five different surfaces modeled here. In the Geosurface Model Properties dialog box, I can see the five surfaces that I've, that I've imported into the model. These are well-based picks. And they're being modeled on the fly. Now, because we have Frame Builder and it's a 3D topology engine, it not only generates these surfaces on the fly, but it also maintains relationships between the surfaces. For example, the shallow Atoka surface is our most well-sampled surface, and therefore our most well-modeled surface. I'm going to use that surface to control the conformance of the B, the Barnett surface, being slightly deeper. And the Barnett surface will control the conformance of the C, and D, these are sequence stratigraphic surfaces, and the E, which is the Ellenberger surface, and the deeper surface. I'm going to turn off the Barnett surface and turn on the Ellenberger. And I want you to notice that it's only being modeled over a triangular shaped area. That's because I only have three or four Ellenberger samples. Now when I apply the conformance technology, I want you to see this happen all at once. So I'm going to also turn on here. This is Discovery 3D showing our 3D model surfaces. The orange surface at the top is the Atoka. The green surface is the Barnett. The yellow and blue surfaces are my sequence stratigraphic markers. And the purple surface at the bottom are the, is the Ellenberger surface. So when I apply the conformance, it will update throughout the geo model on the fly. So I have a fully integrated 3D model. And this is what we're going to be working with. Now I have a cross section in here that has our pilot log. And I'm going to zoom into the area of the cross section, the area where we're going to be working. This pilot well drill straight through from the Atoka to the Barnett, to the CND markers, and to the Ellenberger. And I'll zoom in for clarity here. I'm showing on the cross section and smart section template my petrophysical model. I'm actually running this petrophysical model with this template here to show the results of my petrophysical analysis that I did in PRISM. And if I move over to PRISM, you can see this is the petrophysical model. This is being modeled with an external model built by one of our uh, on-staff petrophysicists. It's modeling mineral content in this track, porosities and effective uh, porosity in this track, calculated TOCs in this track, and inorganic clay markers in these four tracks here. Now notice the increase in the confident mineralogies between the C and the D stratigraphic markers. This is due to a buildup of carbonate and sandstone lithologies in this area and probably will be more confident and therefore would be a good target to, to plan our well in. So we're going to use this zone here to target our surface. And I'm going to use the picking tool within Smart Section to pick this zone here as just a generic marker. Just click right there. It's going to put in a generic marker that I'm going to put into our geo model in a stratigraphic position between the C and the D marker. And when I click OK, that target surface will be modeled over the area in the 3D geo model. So there's our target surface being modeled all over the area in the 3D geo model. Now fortunately, I also have a seismic survey over the area. 
So we're going to look at size vision, size vision of uh, 2D, 3D seismic interpretation module. And notice I have this section right here is also the same section I showed you in smart section. It's showing the pilot well with the synthetic seismogram here, which I've modeled here in uh, log M. Let me go ahead and uh, launch log M here. There we go. We bring it right in here. And then we will correlate the geology to the geophysics with a slight time shift alignment. There. So it's showing the Atoka surface right here is that strong positive reflector that we've modeled right here. In addition, I have created a simulus volume using LMK volume attributes, that, and I put it as a as a time slice version. So I'm going to open up the time slice through the C and the D. This is where the, the, uh, the good lithologies are. And shift to that version, the simulus time slice version. And I'm going to scan up and down at two milliseconds. Now notice these sort of circular anomalies here toward the middle of the survey. These are the results of the collapse features. The Ellenberger is a karsted surface, and these collapse features propagate up through the Barnett and the Atoka, and they cause uh, conduits of water from the wet Ellenberger up into the Barnett. So notice that these wells terminate at the edge of these collapse features. Now the area we're going to be looking at is, is up in here, and notice from the simulus volume, it looks like we have no collapse features. So from the point of view of simulus, it looks like this is a good area for us to explore. I've also got attributes that I can extract along any surface of interest. I can extract 22 different phase frequency or amplitude attributes in addition to a curvature attribute which may indicate where I may have fractures. So I'm going to take the Atoka off my map here and add on my curvature attribute and zoom into the area of interest. And notice in here, I don't see much in the fact in the way of, of curvature anomalies. And that's probably because you can see the, the stratigraphy and structure here is fairly layer cake. So I guess I'm not surprised there's not a strong curvature. But what I do have is the ability now to depth convert this Atoka surface because of my velocity model based upon these time depth port pairs and these color coded wells here that I can use to grid my velocities and then convert the Atoka surface to depth. So I can take this depth converted seismic surface and integrate it into my GEO model to further refine my target surface. So we're turning back over here to smart section and we're going to go back into the frame builder geosurface model properties dialog box and instead of using just well based information I'm going to add an isomap grid. Now new for 2014, we also add the ability to take data points off of an isomap layer and combine it with our well-based database points to give you a more complete and fully featured model surface. But in this case, since I've got a 3D survey, I'm going to go ahead and take my depth converted Atoka surface, add it into the geo model, and let it propagate through our conformance relationships. And now you see the target surface is much more detailedly modeled, much more higher frequency features because of the addition of the seismic data. So we're going to be building a, a new well plan in this open area right here. And to start that process, I'm simply going to lay out a projected line of section along the azimuth of the horizontal reach of that planned well. Select the well, and I have a stub well right here, well number three. And I'm going to add to the vertical section. So there's my stub well. I have a, a TD of, of 100 feet, so it shows up on our well. And I'm going to be using our new well planning tool to plan a well along our target 
surface. And let me zoom in down here where our geo model is. That light blue or that thin blue surface right there, there's our target surface. So I'm going to add a series of target points. Let's just say start at um, this point right here. Add as many target points along that surface as it is necessary to be able to define the trajectory that I want. And maybe one more right there. Zoom out, you can see our, our well plan, and in the well planning tool, these are our target X, Y's, and Z's. It generates on the fly our survey and shows on here our vertical section, our targets, and our plan view with our surface location, our kick out, our landing point, and then running along our target surface. So we've got a completely modeled now uh, well plan that we can export as an Excel spreadsheet and give to the engineers to plan their well program. Now that we've got the well plan, let's go ahead and drill it and correlate the horizontal well into the geology and, geo and stratigraphy and then geosphere. So I'm going to open up my new vertical section here. This represents the well that's being drilled. And I'm showing the five geomodel surfaces, the Atoka, Barnett, the CND markers, and the Ellenberger. Here's my well showing a gamma ray with a color fill. This is just a strict projected line of section. In order for me to do the horizontal well correlation and geosteering, we've added a tool here called SmartStrat that adds the necessary tools here to help me correlate my well bore into my geology. Now for clarity, I'm going to turn off all the surfaces except the barnet. Now our active surface is the B, is the barnet surface represented by this flat magenta line here. So that's our 2D model surface in SmartStrat. As it contrasts to our 3D model surface, our frame builder surface right here, which is in green. Now the vertical panel over here is representing our type log. Now unique to uh, SmartStrat, we have the ability to take our local well, if it has the correct geometry, we can take this local well here, the well that's drilling, convert it to TVT and use it as a type log. Our thought is that when you're correlating in the near portion of the horizontal well, the closest well to you is the well that you're actually drilling. Now if your well geometries do not support this, you can always bring in an offset type log and I'll show you how to do that during the demonstration. Now this vertical panel down here is again unique to us. The red curve here, that's your LWD gamma ray curve and is the same curve that you're seeing on the well template on the bore in the, uh, in the panel above. The blue curve is what we call a predicted curve and it is generated based upon the dip of the active surface, which right now is dipping at zero degrees, the type log we're using, and the geometry of the borehole. And I'm going to zoom into the area that we're actually going to be looking at down here at the bottom here. And as I move the dip slider, <clears throat> notice we're going to be sampling a different portion of my type log, which then updates the predicted curve. And I simply adjust the slider until my predicted curve matches my LWD in the near portion of the well here. So it looks good to this point, so I'm going to right click and add a tie point. Now the way I like to do geosteering, I like to look for symmetries and patterns. And I notice there is a symmetry between this point and this point, which indicates I probably have landed right there, and, and indeed we've actually calculated that red dot as our landing point. Also I've got this peak here, and this peak here indicating I've come down through this zone here and probably coming back up through it here, or rather this point here and this point here. So it indicates I probably have come down, landed, and I'm working my way back up stratigraphically, at least in a gross sense. The other things I like to look at are, are symmetries, or patterns, I should say. Notice this pattern. I call this a smile pattern. I call this a frown pattern. These patterns may indicate potential stratigraphic traversals. For example, I may be coming down, landing, and coming back up stratigraphically, 
they're coming back up stratigraphically and coming down stratigraphically. So I like to divide up my wellbore into these potential stratigraphic reversals. Now this is just my technique. Your technique may vary, but it does seem to work for me. So I'm going to put a tie point right here and segment off this piece of the LWD. Click in this area, which activates the second dip record right here. It also takes this portion of the red LWD curve, converts it to TBT, and puts it against my type log as this blue curve over in the vertical panel over here. Now I can grab the blue curve and stretch and squeeze it, which also changes the dip, which updates my vertical panel and my horizontal panel together. Now the horizontal panel is being modeled in measured depth. And the predicted curve, since it's in measured depth, is always going to be unique. There's never going to be any folding back and forth against itself if your well bore is porpoising. And you can also look at the entire well bore at once, which can be advantageous. Now in the vertical panel, we're looking at a much more micro scale view. We're looking at TVT over here. And between that point and that point is 10 feet in TVT. So this is a micro or a detail view. So working between the vertical and the horizontal panel, you're actually slicing the same pie two different ways with two different points of view. Now to continue the process, I may put in another trial point at that peak. Click in that record, come over here, drag the segment of my LWD to match the type log, and continue the process. For workflow, workflow streamlining, I can double click, which also puts a tri, uh, tie point right there. Stretch that up there. Now notice that my blue curve does not quite match my type log. That could be either because I've got stratigraphic changes or maybe there's a fault. You put in a fault, well, what is a fault? A fault is a shift in the error. So I hold my shift key down and I slide that curve up until it matches and then I adjust the dip. And I've got such high resolution, if that indeed is a fault, I've modeled less than one foot of throw on. And I continue this process down the borehole. Until I get to the point that I'm thinking, well, maybe since I've gone fairly about 3,000 feet, 2,000 feet vertical section away from my type log, maybe I should change my type log. Because the farther I go away from my type log, the less confidence I have I may be correctly modeling. So I'm going to click on the last dip record and load a type log. And I'm going to use the type log from the pilot well that I used to define the stratigraphy in the previous uh, cross section. <clears throat> now I may need to do a little calibration to make sure I'm hanging my offset type log in the same active surface as my local type log. So I've got some calibration tools. So I need to do a little bit of offsetting. Bring it up here to hang it right on the barnet. And if I've got any uh, stretching or squeezing or thickening or thinning of uh, the stratigraphy, I can also model that and take care of that and get it to match. Right there it's matching perfectly. And it's also matching down in the vertical panel where the, the borehole is actually penetrating. So I no longer need my local type log, so I'll just turn it off. Now going forward, I'm modeling strictly against the offset type log. Looks like I've got a pretty good fit to about there, so I'll right click and put a tie point there. Click on the last segment, come back over here, do a little stretch and squeezing, so I think I've got a good match here. And there, I finished my correlation. Now what have I done? I've actually done a horizontal well correlation in a 2D sense based on this dip model of the Barnett represented by this magenta line. But notice it no longer matches my green 3D model surface. So I've got to tie my 3D surface to my 2D surface to update the geo model. Now to help me do that, I can hang a series of type logs that I use to do the correlations at their respective positions at each of these dip segments. This will help me know where I need to put in a well point to tie my 2D smart trap model to my 3D model. Now I want you to see this all happen on the fly in 3D. So I'm going to bring up the 3D model, the map view, in the vertical section and try to get them all, all on the screen at once. And 
And with a cup one or two inner wall points, which I just used straight smart section functionality, so I activate the Barnett, click the picking tool, and click right on that type log where it says the Barnett should be to tie the 3D surface to the 2D smart strat surface. You notice it immediately updates the map and the 3D model on the fly. So maybe add one more point over here. And now I've got a fully updated geo model. We call this process geo modeling while geo steering. Let's go ahead, go ahead and turn back on the 3D surfaces. Now, I have, from a geologist's point of view, uh, or geo steering is 95% horizontal well correlation. So I've correlated the well bore into my geology and geophysics, and now I have to see if my well bore is on target and if the trajectory will keep it in target. But if I look at where my well bore is currently going, if I continue to drill along here, I will drill out of the zone of interest. So I need to look ahead of the borehole to see if there's any hazards. So fortunately, because I've got the seismic and a velocity model that I built over in size vision, I've got an available on the fly depth converted and scaled seismic backdrop. Now this is real data. This is real seismic data. This is not just a, a bitmap in the backdrop. If I change my velocity model, this backdrop would also change. So looking ahead of the borehole, I see I have no seismic scale faults to worry about or any seismic scale amplitude anomalies indicating possible overpressured zones or other geohazards. So it looks good from a seismic point of view. So I'm going to use the target line tool to drag a target line to generate the engineering parameters that the engineers need to put in their computers to get it back on the zone. What I'm saying is here, build, drill it with a build rate, get back on this target line, and get back on the target zone by the time you get to this point. So I copy these parameters to the clipboard. I launched my email. paste in the parameters, send it to the drillers in the field, and they take off the parameters that they need to put in their computers to get the build rate back on target. So in reviewing, what have we done? We've looked at the Barnett, we've modeled it in 3D, we've looked at the petrophysics, and determined where our sweet spot is. Put the target point in there, model it in 3D. Then we looked at the seismic and looked at attributes of semblance to see where we may want to stay away from potential water wet conduits in the Bielenberger. We modeled curvature and we then took our depth converted surface and used that as a controlling surface in our gym model to update our target surface. We used that updated target surface then to plan a very accurate well along our surface of interest. Then we drilled the well, we did the horizontal well correlation, did the geosteering by providing the engineers the parameters they need to get on target and stay in the zone. So in summary, I think you can see the power of seamlessly working through the disciplines of geology, geophysics, petrophysics, geomodeling to give you the most accurate and up-to-date geomodel possible. I introduced a couple of new features that were coming out in 2014, the LMP volume attributes and the LMP well plan tool. So that's why we think the geographics offers the most comprehensive and highly integrated geoscience interpretation available in today's upstream market. So at this point, I'll turn it back to Justine. If she has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I do. I have four questions, Fred. And just for the audience, if you've got any questions, please do submit them. Um, we're going to be, I'm going to be asking the questions now and Fred will be giving us live responses or as, for as many of them as you can. Um, the first one is, is the LMKR Well Planner part of Geographics 2014 or a separate module? Well, it is part of the 2014 release. It will be a separate license module, just like the Track Planner Express is today. But it will be available coming the first quarter of next year. 
related to that, I think I can address this one. When will Geographics 2014 be available? Um, it is not currently available. The Geographics 2013 is our current release. Geographics 2014 will be coming in the first quarter of 2014, and we will be sure to let everyone on the webinar today know via um, our e-bulletins that we send out on any major release, advertising that we're doing, and of course our website. We have another one here. Can you store the fictional well-planned tra trajectory in Wellbase if you want to? Yes, once you've done the plan and decided this is the plan that you want to commit, we have a new proposed well tab in Wellbase that will allow you to save that plan as a planned survey. Great. Uh, another question, what 3D viewer are you using? I'm currently using Discovery 3D. This ships with the base application, so everybody has this. It uses uh, Microsoft's DirectX uh, Xbox gaming technology. So if you have a uh, game controller, an Xbox game controller, you can plug it in and actually fly through that model. Now coming out in 2014, we have a new product that we internally are calling Reveal. I don't know if that's going to be the marketing name or not. But it allows you to actually take an uh, aerial subset. You draw a little subset area on your map in GeoAtlas, and it takes any of the 3D objects like wells, surfaces, cross sections, and creates a 3D view using the same technology. It is not Discovery 3D, though. It's the new reveal module. And we will show uh, fence diagrams, seismic uh, backdrops, uh, interpolated curve attributes along the fence diagram is going to be a very exciting 3D visualization product coming out in 2014. 